Alright everyone, we are back for another Return to Ravnica draft. I'm hopping into an 8-4 right now, and Zach is with me via Skype this time. Yeah, we're trying the long distance thing this time. We're going to see how this works out. It, it worked when we were doing testing it uh, prior to this. Hopefully things don't cut out and get awkward. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, I will have to explain, tell you what all this, the cards are going to be this time, as opposed to you just being here to see it, but it should work out fine. We've done this before. <laughs> More than once. We get bored easily sometimes. <laughs> yeah, we do. Well, we've got six of us in here now, waiting for two more to fill. Hopefully we can uh, crush this one like we did the one last night. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, even if it even goes remotely as well as last night did, this will be sweet. Yeah, seriously. Um, getting all that removal. I actually rewatched our draft. It was just insane. I could not <laughs> believe the amount of good removal we got, the limited amount of other stuff that we saw. Like, we were just funneled everything. Oh, yeah. I mean, we were fed the entire time. I mean, there's really no other explanation for it, especially since all th none of the three opponents we played against were red. Nope. Except, oh, no, one. take that back. Round one opponent was red, white, blue, but he was more blue, white than anything. Yeah. Um, all right. Our pack has finally opened up. Woo! And it looks like there's nothing super great in here. We do have a Blood Crypt, which is most likely what we're going to take, just because it's worth a few ticks. Um, our Uncommons, we've got a Fairy Imposter, and a Rakdos Kirun, and a Slesnia Charm, which I think the Charm is probably the best one. And then Notable Commons, we've got a Shred Freak, a Stealer of Secrets, Tenement Crasher, Eyes in the Skies, Towering Indric, and a Azorius Guildgate. Yeah, I mean, personally, I'm happy just taking Blood Crypt here. I think that actually Fairy Imposter is the best speculative pick, because that card can be insane, but I think you're right that Selesnya Charm is probably the best card. It's just so powerful sometimes. But I also think, well, I mean, as everyone will probably see over the first next couple of weeks, I hate drafting green in this format. I see. I'm the opposite. I love drafting green, but that's because I just love green, and it's actually very strong in here. The problem is that everybody drafts it. Exactly, and that's the only reason that I don't like it. It's not that it's not good. It's just that too many people are doing it. Because I agree, I love being the green deck, but okay. Next pack. Let's see here. Um, we have an uncommon missing because there is a Pythian needle. Um, and the uncommons are a Phantom General and a Slum Reaper. We do have a Gorehouse Chainwalker in here, and is it Guildgate, an Action Injunction, Sluice Way Scorpion, Mizium Skin, Aerial Predation, Essence Backlash, Stone Fair Crocodile. I think I'm leaning towards the Chainwalker. Maybe we can go the opposite of what we did last time and just go really aggressive Black Red. Yeah, I really think it's either Chainwalker or Slum Reaper, and I like Chainwalker better in general. So, and plus Slum Reaper might wheel, so I think Chainwalker's a solid pick. Um, yeah, I don't really see an argument for much else in that pack. Really I, I could see an argument for the Guildgate, but I'd rather just ch take the Chainwalker. Yeah, not with the Chainwalker in the pack, I don't think. Exactly. I think yeah. that it leads us to a better strategy than Guildgate does. Yeah. Ooh, there is a Syncopate. There is a Golgari Key Rune. Uh, Void Wielder, Giant Growth, Hussar Patrol, Traitor's Instinct, uh, Rootborn Defenses, the 3-2 three, for 3 that can regenerate. I think... That it's, I think it's between Void Wielder, Dispel, and Syncopate, honestly. Um, there is a Rakdos Guildgate, too, so we could take that and just try and force Rakdos again. Yeah, but I would actually be fine if we're, like, blue-red, somewhat aggressive. Um, I like both Void Wielder and Syncopate for that deck. Syncopate is much better in here than I originally expected, because counter spells aren't always that great and limited. Um, yes, but su Syncopate is surprisingly relevant, especially, I mean... The fact that it exiles the card is insane. Like, I, counter Sluice Way Scorpion. Oh, yeah. you don't get to scavenge it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I honestly think that's what I'm going to take here. Um, because I haven't got to play with it much, and I would like to try some. I mean, we haven't shipped any good blue so far, so I'm fine taking Syncope here. Um, like, yeah, the only downfalls <laughs> are shipping Void Wielder, but whatever. Yeah, and open up no blue or red cards. <laughs> of course. Um, let's see here. We've got our rare is still in here, which is a Conjured Currency. Um, all three uncommons are still in here because it's Vandal Blast, Rakdos Ringleader, and Risen Sanctuary. Which The Sanctuary is the only one of those that's anywhere near good, but really don't want to jump ship to green-white quite yet. Yeah. No. Um, there's a Trestle Troll, there's a Dead Reveler, there's a Horn Collar's Chant, and a Selesnya Guildgate. 
I think it's just the Dead Reveler. Yeah, I think it's Dead Reveler, because worst case scenario, we do end up Black Red, and even if our last pick is wasted, all we missed out was on uh, was a Guild Gate, so yeah. whatever. I'm fine with that. Plus, okay. if we end up Grixis, Dead Reveler's still a solid call card yes. in there as well. Speaking of Grixis, there is a Doorkeeper, a Sewer Shambler, and a Paralyzing Grasp in here. Other noticeable cards is a Dynacharge, Selesnya Key Rune, Golgari Longlegs, and Mind Rot. I think it's pretty easily just Sewer Shambler. Is it the Shambler instead of the Doorkeeper? Yes, I think Shambler is the safer pick. Um, especially since we, two of our cards are lending us to an aggressive deck already. Yeah, that's true. Like, it, Doorkeeper would just be on a completely different path. Yeah. I just love Doorkeeper. I agree with you. I love Doorkeeper as well, but I don't think that this is shaping up to be the deck for it. Okay, let's see here. Good cards in this pack. We've got Stonefair Crocodile, we have Dagger Drum Imp, Rites of Reaping, Soul Tithe, Sundering Growth, uh, Downsized Crosstown Courier. Um, there's a lot of good green-black stuff in here still with the Stonefair Crocodile and the Rites of Re Reaping. Uh, could just be the Dagger Drum Imp and hope to draw, get a whole bunch of Sewer Shamblers, though. I think Dagger Drum Imp is the safe pick because I do like it in the aggressive Rakdos decks. Like, if we end up playing Traitorous Instinct and things like that, I like it in there, and I like it... Like, maybe we end up Jund instead of Grixis, and That's we end up true. with, like, Sluice Scorpions and things like that, or Drag oh, I, love, I do love that deck. Speaking of that deck, there's a Grizzly Salvage in here still. Uh, there's also a Dispel, an Asperius Skywatch, a Risen Sanctuary, Sphere of Safety, Deviant Glee, Reborn Defenses, and Armory Guard. Wow, so we... Well, okay. we got to decide here if we want to try and go the Jun deck with Grizzly Salvage or try and stick to our blue plan and get Skywatcher to spell. I think the blue plan is probably safer. I don't know. I mean, we've only got Syncopate. We also only have red. We only have the Gorehouse Chainwalker for red because the Blood Crypt doesn't affect our decisions here. Right. Yeah, that is a good point, actually. I think I'm going to take the Salvage. Potentially be Bug or something weird like that? Yeah. I can see that. Although, Salvage is innately worse than both Dispel and Asperia Skywatch. Agreed, but I really like the deck that you can get from Salvage, and seeing one that late makes me hopeful. Alright, alright, we can give it a try. Um, okay, we've got Crows the Monitor and Inspiration as two good cards in here. There's also a Cobble Brute if we want to try and get Red back into this, and Azorius Guildgate. I think it's just the Monitor after taking Salvage. That's what I'm thinking, too. Nice little 4-drop, strong... Okay, Fairy Imposter Tabled. There's an Axbane Stag, an Eyes in the Sky, a Tenement Crasher, and an Azorius Guildgate. Hmm. I mean, I think it's the Imposter or the S Crasher. Oh, boy. I yeah, I'd just take the Imposter. That's I what think I was thinking. That it's the... Mm, I don't know. I really don't know. Just because Jun is better than... Yeah. Speaking of Jun, there is a Sluiceway Scorpion that tabled in this deal. deck. Slam it. So, I think that we might have picked the right colors to go into, and then there's nothing in this next one. <laughs> of course. Um, yeah, Traitors, I, I mean, Traitor's Instincts is probably the pick. There's a Reborn Defenses, there's a Chronic Flooding, and a Selesnia Sentry. I think I'm just going to take this Traitor's Instincts, because we may end up Jund. Uh, yeah, no. Traitor's Instinct is nuts. I know that you have not had the experience with, had this card, with this but card, but it's amazing. Okay, uh, Horn Colors Chant, Drain Pipe Vermin, Swift Justice. Pretty easy Horn Colors Chant here. Yeah, that seems uh, fine. Street Sweeper, Search Warrant, we'll take the Sweeper, because we're not going to play either of those. And then we'll take this Terrace Worm and most likely not play it. Yeah, seven men is a lot, especially a for lot. only a 5-5. Five five. <laughs> yeah. Well, we are kind of all over the place right now, but... I think um, we're going... And now I want to play Blue-White, because there's a Righteous Authority in this pack. Eh. Yeah. There's also, let's see here, uh, Hellhole Flailer, Sluiceway Scorpion... Rubbleback Rhino, Explosive Impact. So there's some good cards in Jun. Jeez. Yeah, I was going to say Hellho Flare and Explosive Impact are both kind of insane. Mm -hmm. I think Flailer is actually better than Impact. Just depends on... It depends on the deck. And the, I think that since we're trying to also build the Scavenge deck, the Hellho Flailer is better because we can throw some guys onto him and just win. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, So I think we just take Flailer. Like, that, and just abandon Blue. Yeah. I think that's the plan. Ooh, there's an Ash Zealot as our rare in this one. We might actually take that. Double Red's kind of a pain, though. Uh, Launch Party, Splatter Thug, Sluiceway Scorpion, Assassin Strike, Dead Reveler, Stab Wound. Jesus. Ooh, it's Stab Wound. Not close. This card, this pack's so good. There's it, plenty it, of stuff I would love to see table out of this pack. 
No kidding. And we might even table something. I mean... Yeah. We're taking the stab wound, like you said, but... Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, we've got a Jailbreaker, a Rakdos Guildgate, a Rakdos Shred Freak, uh, stuff not on our colors, there's a Bluster Squall, Fall the Gavel, Common Bond, there's an Electricery. I think I'm just going to take the gate here. Yeah, I would just take the guild gate. Maybe There's a okay. Void Wielder if we wanted to try and keep the blue in there, but I think that we've abandoned it at this point. No, no, no. Blue is over. <laughs> blue is very over, but no, I think we just take guild gate. Now that we are kind of dedicated to three colors, we can start yeah. taking gates more highly. Okay, this pack, we've got a Batterhorn, a Rakdos Charm, a Civic Saber, and a Cremate is really all that we can play out of it. Rakdos Charm, easy pickup. Is it good? Oh, yes, yeah. it's good. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to play with the charm yet, so. Okay, this one. Doorkeeper, no. Um, however, there's a Gerard's Orders in here, and I think I'm going to take that speculatively. It's that or a Tavern Swindler. Mm. Yeah, okay, I just take the Orders. I mean, it's decent. We could open least. up a Pack Rat. Or actually, this Slitherhead that's right here um, is really great to get for the thing to throw into the graveyard, because then you just get something and make it bigger. That's um, true. There's also a Grizzly Salvage, Perilous Shadows, Chorus of Might, Gobbly News, Transguild Promenade. But I think I'm taking the Slitherhead. Yeah, I would just take the Slitherhead. It's also a one-drop for our aggressive Rakdos drum deck. Yeah, I think that this is right. And I'm curious to play with it. I haven't actually played with uh, Slitherhead yet. I think he's not good in as many decks as I see people try to force him into, but I do feel there are decks that totally merit his inclusion. Also, he is probably my favorite art in the set, so I'm happy to get to play with him. Well, that's true. Plus, he can make Chainwalker a 4-3, which, who doesn't love that? Yeah, that's fair. That's pretty solid. Okay, I think we can safely switch into Cost Sort right now and look at our awful, awful mana base. Eh, we've got two fixers so far. It's we not do. the worst. I cut the Corn Color Chant, and I'm cutting this Trader's Instincts for now. Don't cut that. We have a Rakdos Charm. Those two cards work so well together. How do they work so well together? You bash them down to, like, five or six with the Traitor's Instinct, and then Rakdos charm them to death. <laughs> okay, let's see here. We've got an Electricery, a Trestle Troll, a Zorius Charm, a Zorius Key Rune, Soul Tithe, Catacomb Slug, Axe Bane Guardian, Foil Forest. Pretty sure it's just Trestle Troll. Yeah. It's not it's... really what I want in this deck, but it'll do. Yeah, I'm sad that there's still both the Charm and the Key Rune for Azorius. Uh, apparently nobody's in that. I guess not. Although, I, people seem to undervalue both the key runes and the charms in general. Okay, uh, the only real pick for us here is a Tenement Crasher. We could take a Sundering Growth, but every, there's Inspiration oh. Fencing Ace and a Blank Rare in Search of the City. No, Tenement Crasher's fine. I like Tenement Crasher, even in this deck. Like, You do need a finisher. Ideally, you want it to be a 4-drop, but worst yeah. case, we can play a 6-drop. Yeah. Okay, we've got a Mind Rot... And a Dyna Charge <laughs> to choose. Dyna Charge, easy pickup. Okay, ooh, Launch Party and Sluiceway Scorpion tabled. Ooh. I think we take the Scorpion, though. Just because we can grab it with the Gerard's Orders. Mm, but we have so little removal. We all, we do have a Stab Wound, we have another pack to go. Yeah, I I could go either way, to be honest. So. Sluiceway Scorpion works as removal a lot of the times. That is also true. All right, all right. And we need more scavenge guys. We can take the scorpion. Um, we've got an electricery, a druid's deliverance, fall the gavel, tablet of the druids, cross town courier, and the land is gone from this already. <laughs> yeah, there's I'm a reason take the for that. I mean, electricery is fine. It's not fine, but it'll do. Um, <laughs> Batterhorn or cremate? This actually is tough. I do like cremate a lot, but Batterhorn's another body. I just take Batterhorn. I mean, it's a good sideboard card, and if we run up against someone. With something relevant that's an artifact. Well, we got a blank Aqua Seed because there was nothing in that pack. And then got a Goblin News 14th pick, which we might actually play that. Probably not, but... Probably not, but maybe. it's possible. Maybe. It actually works really well with Traitor's Instinct. <laughs> You're going to get me to put that in this deck, aren't you? Maybe. It depends on how Balls to the Walls aggro we end up. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I don't know. Looking at this, I don't think we're going to be super balls to the walls. It feels very mid rangey, except for the fact that I just opened a Carnival Hellsteed. That's very mid rangey. <laughs> um, there's also a Crows to Guild Mage, an Explosive Impact, and a Gutter Snipe in here. Jeez. Talk like, about a pack. I mean, it's Hellsteed, not close, but yeah. 
<laughs> I'm hoping that the guild mage... F oh, there's also a launch party, so we actually could get something. And an Axebane Guardian. There's a lot of good cards in this pack for us to table. So yeah, we could get that launch party back. I mean, that's the most likely card to come back. But I could also see guild mage, because no one seems to see the merits of playing that card. Yeah. It's really good. Okay, we've got a couple of good picks again here. We've got a Trans Guild Promenade, we have a Splatter Thug, Throw Kill Assassin, Golgari Charm, and Cobble Brute. Oh, it's Assassin, and it's two drop that can kill anything and swing for two. Sweet! I need death touchers. That gives us three death touchers in this deck. It's my kind of deck. Yeah, I know. Guys with death touch are awesome, especially when they only cost two mana. Mm-hmm. Okay, we have Dagger Drum Imp, we have Aerial Predation, Gatekeeper Vine, and Treasured Find, and a or a Gorehouse Chainwalker. I did not see that at first. Let's just take the Chainwalker. I think so. I think that we can give ourselves this way, like, kind of a nuts uh, aggro draw this way. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Well, we can turn green into kind of a splash and hopefully pick up, like, a Golgari Guildgate. Yeah, that'd be great. I mean, yeah, we have to play the green at this point. We've got too much of it to not play it at all. Ooh, that's an Underworld Connections. That might be okay. What else is in here? Dead Reveler, Street Spasm, Centaur's Herald. Oh, jeez. Underworld Connections is fine, but I think that Street Spasm is actually better. Is it? In our deck especially. Because, I mean, ideally, we're trying to kill them. Like, we don't have a huge late game other than Carnival Hellsteed. Yeah. And we don't have tons of removal to draw into. So, like, we're just drawing two and three drops? Underworld Connections lets us draw to what little we have, though. I suppose, but it seems like having more of it yeah, is just true. better. Alright, we'll take the spasm here. Okay, we have a Zonikev Locust, a Rites of Reaping, an Ogre Jailbreaker, is it Guildgate, Axbane Guardian? I think it's the Locust, because um, throwing that into the bin with Grizzly Salvage is pretty solid. I could see an argument for the Rites of Reaping or the Jailbreaker, though. Yeah, as you say, Jailbreaker is the only other card that I was considering. I don't really, I don't really want to play rights. It's fine, yeah. but I don't really want to play it. Um, Locust is good though, and I like, think, I think it it's comparable with Jailbreaker. So yeah. I, I'm fine taking that. Let's take that. Okay, we've got a another monitor, a Golgari Charm, De Deviant Glee uh, as our real picks here. Ooh, Deviant Glee is actually kind of tempting. Are we that aggressive? I guess we can throw it on our Dagger Drum Imp. Um, I mean, it's good on Dagger Drum Imp. It's great on Chainwalker. It's awesome on Hellful Flare. Flailer. It's good on Corrosive Demonitor, which we already have one of. It's good on Sluiceway Scorpion. Like, yeah. what creature in our deck is it not? We do have good three on? Death Touchers in this deck, uh, and I love Death Touch and Trample. That's about all you needed to tell me. I'm taking the Glee. Yeah. So let's just take Glee. Let's. Okay. Tower Ninja, Grim Rouse, about Perilous Shadows, Death's Presence, and Chorus of Might are in our color. I and Traitor's we're... Instinct. Ooh. Second Traitor's Instinct? I How many must... creatures do we have? We have 17. We're probably not going to play all those, though. No, but I think it's actually a pretty easy Traitor's Instinct. <sighs> We've already got one. Yeah, I know, but that card gets so much better in multiples. <laughs> um, Let's see. Like, the only other option really is Roustabout as another 2-drop. I will take the Instincts. Okay. Uh, we've got Bella's Lizard, Destroy the Evidence, Chemist's Trick. I think we just hate either the Skywatch or the Fencing Ace here. Ooh, yeah, Skywatch. I don't want to play against that. I don't care about Fencing Ace. Okay, Skullrin, Mind Rot, Axebane Stag, Vassal Soul, Keen Apparition, Catacomb Slug. Uh, Mind Rot we might actually play, so... Uh, Archweaver, Golgari Charm, Drain Piper, I'm taking the Charm here. Yeah, sure. Charm is good. Mm -hmm. uh, aerial Predation or Hayden Arrester? No, oh, no. Predation. Predation's awesome. Course of Might, Centaur's Accord, Heroes Union. I'm taking this Accord. Yeah, sure. That sounds good. I don't understand why people don't respect Arrester. Like, that card is very good. It's very good. Especially with Stealer of Secrets. <laughs> well, if you draft the Stealer of Secrets and alt attain deck, you're doing fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> of course, if you draft the all detain deck without Steelers Secrets, it's kind of awkward. Yeah. We are definitely going to have to not, not be able to play our Crows to monitor. I don't think we can play any double green without any kind of green fixing. Yeah, that's true. Um... We're probably not playing Orders at this point. I think we still play Salvage, though. 
We'll have to see. I don't know. Order still seems fine to be able to go get us our Carnival Hellsteed and a Slitherhead or something. That's true. Like, I mean, we've got a bomb we can get with it. And if we've already got Carnival Hellsteed, we can get the Locust and, um, I don't know, anything else. Like a Sluicely Scorpion. Like, <laughs> well, I got a 15th pick Course of Might over a land. <laughs> okay. Course of Might is also very good. Why? <sighs> That's okay. That's not as big of a deal as what was happening last night. Last night was terrible. That's true. Yeah. Well, let's get to deck building. Come on. Yeah, the only thing I'm sad build. about is no Golgari Gilgate. Yeah, I really would have... A deck would have been a lot better with the Gilgate, but I just didn't see one. Like, there was no point where it came up. Granted, somebody will point out probably when I had a chance and probably took something worse over it, but I don't recall seeing it. I don't remember you saying it, but... That doesn't mean I didn't see it. I may have just glanced <laughs> over it. That is always a possibility. Okay, here we go. We moved into deck build. So, we've got at least two red-black things. We don't have as much removal as I would like. We do have some solid cards. Um, let's see here. Locust, Stab Wound, Super Shambler. Am I really going to play both of these Traitor's Instincts? Maybe. We'll have to see... We'll have to see how aggressive we actually end up being. Um, okay. Alright, I am at 24 currently. Um, with some stuff sitting off the side, like the Crows, the Monitor, the Horn Collars Chant. But I don't think we're going to get to that. Oh wait, 25 Street Spasm, excuse me. Okay. So we're at 25 with 15 creatures currently. Okay. Um, I could fit... Creatures that could still potentially go in is Betterhorn, uh, Axe Plane Stag, Crows the Monitor, but don't really Yeah, no, play we're not any playing those. any of those. Okay, we get the Spasm at the top end. Six drops. We have a Locust, a Crusher, and a Hellsteed. You can cut Crusher. That's what I was We about don't to need say. more than three six drops. Or yeah. more than two, sorry. We've got the Goblin News on five. Okay. Um, out of the four, we've got an Orders, two, in two Instincts, and two Sluiceway Scorpions. Okay. Three is a Predation, a Stab Wound, a Dead Reveler, Health of Flailer, Sewer Shambler, and Trestle Troll. Nice. Oh, uh, well, actually, there's our next easy pick. It's just Trestle Troll. Yeah? Yeah. That puts us down to 13 creatures, though, is the problem. That's fine. Uh, two drops. Well, we're at 23 here. Two drops, we've got the ch both Charms, Golgari and Rakdos. Grizzly Salvage, Dagger Drum Imp, two Chain Walkers, and a Thrill Kill Assassin. Yeah. And then a Slitherhead and a Deviant Glee. This is a pretty ugly deck. Eh, I've seen worse. And one with worse. <laughs> um, let's see. So yeah, do we... Hmm, just trying to think. So what... Do we... We don't have any more two, three, or four drops other than the monitor, do we? Monitor and troll. Yeah, and Troll doesn't really lend itself to the plan we're in. Now, granted, we'll probably board it in. And we could play I mean, Mind Rot. This seems like a fine 23. Now, I, won't, I was meaning Chris just because... Yeah, we need some more, but... Nice to have. Now, granted, 13 is fine, especially with Hellseed, and we get to play orders. I am. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like we're playing, like, 13 and a half. <laughs> Let's see, did we end up playing Grizzly Salvage? I'm sorry, I forgot. Yes, Grizzly Salvage is in here. So that helps as well. I mean, that digs us past, you know, a bunch of lands and bad spells. And yeah. We don't really have many bad spells. I guess we'd have two Trader Strand Stinks in here. Those are pretty bad spells. <laughs> you will see how those are. We will see. Um, but no, I think this is a solid... Alright, let's look at colors. I think green is definitely our splash color. Uh, we have only two green cards in the Predation and the Ooze. Um, then we've got Golgari, Charm, Grizzly Savage, Jared's Orders, Sluiceway Scorpions, and that's it for green. Yeah. So okay. it'll definitely be our least. For we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven black cards, and then every one of our multicolor spells can be played with black. So black is our main color by far. Uh, okay. And then red, we've got five red cards and three multicolor cards that care about red. Okay. Gotcha. So. 
essentially eight red cards, a million black cards, and a couple of green. About the same, actually, about the same amount of green. Okay, gotcha. So we've got let's see here: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven green, and uh, five, eight red, a slither head that can be played green or black, and then. Let's see here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 cards, including the slither head that we need black for. Okay, yeah, so black by far the main color. Um, Which see. is where you want to be if you're going to be playing Jund in this, because it's the one that's in both colors. Yes, absolutely. Well, and it's the one with usually the best cards. Um, uh, it's saying for land 7, 5, and 3, 7 swamp, 5 mountain, 3 forest. I think I'm going to cut a mountain for a forest because we have the blood crypt and the guild gate. So that gives us 9 black sources, 6 red sources, and 4 green sources. We could even do 3 mountains and 5 forests maybe. Even it out. Or we could um, do 3, 4, and 8 swamps. I don't think we need eight swamps. I think we could even actually go down to six, just because none of our black cards are double colored either. Okay. And what do you want to do? Six four, six swamp four mountain five forest. Yeah, that sounds good. Because then that gives us yeah six red sources, eight black sources, and then the five green sources. So that seems fine. I mean, it's a little sketchy just because I again I really wanted one more guild gate, but yeah, it would have been great. Oh well. Okay, well, that is 40. Uh, we've got four and a half minutes, and I am going to submit this, and we will see everyone back here for round one.